Russian and Ukrainian troops are engaged in an intense battle on the eastern front line. Artillery shelling, drone strikes and gunfire inflicted casualties on both sides. Meanwhile, Ukraine claimed that it had advanced by at least 2 kilometers towards the eastern city of Bakhmut. Russia claimed that it successfully repelled Ukraine's attacks. A Russian missile hit a restaurant in the Kramatorsk city of Ukraine in the Donetsk region. At least four people, including an infant, were killed. Over 40 people were also injured in the attack. Ukrainian officials rescued people trapped underneath the rubble. Meanwhile, a second Russian missile hit a building in the Kramatorsk city, injuring at least five Ukrainians. The United States will provide Ukraine with a new military package worth over $500 million. This is according to the spokesperson of the Pentagon. The military aid will include tanks, armored vehicles and air defense equipments. This is the 41st military aid package that the US will give Ukraine since the Russian invasion in February 2022. Leaders of NATO member countries arrived in the Dutch city, The Hague, on Tuesday. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte greeted the NATO leaders. Polish President Andrzej Duda also attended the meeting. This comes ahead of the NATO summit in Lithuania in July. Chinese President Xi Jinping met New Zealand's Prime Minister Chris Hipkins in Beijing on Tuesday. The two leaders agreed to promote trade and investment between the two countries. Later on Tuesday, Xi also met Vietnam's Prime Minister Pha Minh Chin. She said that China considers Vietnam as a priority country in its neighborhood. Vietnam's PM agreed to support China's Belt and Road Initiative. Kyriakos Mitsotakis was sworn in as the Greek Prime Minister in Athens on Tuesday. This is after his conservative New Democracy Party won the parliamentary elections with a majority vote. Mitsotakis has been elected as the Prime Minister for the second consecutive time. After the swearing-in, Mitsutaki said that he would work towards improving Greece's economy. He also vowed to boost revenue from the country's tourism industry. Election results were announced in the West African country of Sierra Leone. President Julius Mara Bayo has been re-elected with 56% of the vote share. Meanwhile, the main opposition leader, Samura Kamara, has dismissed the results. Kamara said that the results were biased and lacked transparency. In Spain, Barcelona's metro services resumed on Wednesday. This is after police officials declared that a suspicious object was found on the metro station. They said that it was a false alarm. On Tuesday, police officers had shut down the metro after a security guard reported a ticking noise from a waste bin. The bomb disposal squad used special robots to neutralize the alleged threat. After the operation, the officials said that no explosives were found. Clashes broke out between French police and residents of a suburb in Paris. This was after a local teenager was shot and killed by police officers. According to the police, the 17-year-old was killed after failing to comply with police orders to stop his car at a check post. The police officer who allegedly shot the child is being investigated for homicide. Five cases of malaria have been reported in the US states of Florida and Texas. This is the first time that malaria has been detected in America after 20 years. The Center for Disease Control, or CDC, has declared a medical emergency. They have urged residents of Texas and Florida to get immediate checkups if they report symptoms. New York City is planning to charge daily tolls for vehicles that enter the Central Business District or Midtown Manhattan. The toll will be worth $23 per day. City officials say that tolls would encourage people to use public transport. This would decongest the roads and have a positive impact on the environment. However, residents have raised their concerns about the tolls. They say not everybody can afford the price. Some have even called the city administration, and I quote, crazy. South Korea is implementing a new age counting method. Under the system, South Koreans will get younger by at least a year or two. Earlier, South Korea used to rely on its traditional age-counting method. Under this, citizens would be assigned the age of one year at birth. 
This would make South Koreans older compared to other international citizens who were born in the same year. In climate, wildfires burning in Canada have released a record 160 million tons of carbon. This is according to the European Union's Atmospheric Monitoring Service. This year's wildfire season has been the worst on record for Canada. The flames have already torched over 7 million hectares of land. That's greater than the combined area burned in annual wildfires in the last six years. Residents in the US city of Chicago woke up to smoky skies. This is because smoke from Canada's wildfires engulfed the windy city skyline. On Tuesday, Chicago recorded the worst air quality in the world. Smoke from Canada's wildfires have also filled skies of several towns along the east coast of the US. Meanwhile, smoke from the Canadian wildfires have now reached Europe. Fumes of smoke have crossed the Atlantic Ocean and reached Spain. The smoke turned Spain's skies dark orange along with the haze. Scientists have said that Canada's wildfire season is yet to reach its peak. A heat wave is scorching parts of southern US. Temperatures crossed 38 degrees Celsius in the states of Arizona, Texas and Florida. At least one child was killed due to dehydration in Texas. The National Weather Service issued a heat advisory warning to over 62 million Americans. Saudi Arabian authorities made arrangements to keep Hajj pilgrims cool in Mecca. This is after temperatures crossed 48 degrees Celsius. Saudi officials installed water sprays around the holy site. Over one and a half million people are participating in the pilgrimage this year. Thousands of people have been affected by floods in India's northeastern state of Assam. At least two people have been killed as flood waters washed away several houses. The disaster occurred after the Brahmaputra River broke its banks due to incessant rainfall. Indian officials are conducting rescue operations in the affected regions. The Latin American country of Chile is recovering from the aftermath of floods. Chilean police officials are continuing with rescue operations. Two people have been killed in landslides triggered by the floods. Over 13,000 people have lost their homes. Climate activists from the group Just Stop Oil sprayed orange paint outside the London office of energy giant Total Energies. At least 27 protesters were detained by the UK police. The group protested against the alleged involvement of Total Energies in the East African crude oil pipeline and demanded the oil giant to cease oil exploration operations. In business, reports say the United States is considering new restrictions on exports of artificial intelligence chips to China. The Commerce Department will stop the shipments of chips as early as July. Companies like NVIDIA, Micron and AMD will be affected by the move. US President Joe Biden has said that he does not expect a recession to hit the economy. He says that the United States economy is quote-unquote strong now. Biden said this at a private fundraiser even in the American state of Maryland. The remarks come a day before his economic policy speech in Chicago. Reports say UBS Group is looking to cut more than half of Credit Suisse's workforce from next month. This will impact nearly 35,000 positions. Employees in Credit Suisse's investment bank in London, New York and some parts of Asia will be affected. Positions of bankers, traders and support staff will be cut as part of the redundancies. US-based automaker Ford has confirmed that it will begin laying off people from this week. The layoffs will mostly affect engineering positions in the US and Canada. Earlier this week, reports pointed out that Ford is due to cut at least 1,000 salaried employees. However, the automaker has not confirmed the number of positions that will be eliminated. A US bankruptcy judge has approved Overstock.com's purchase of Bed Bath & Beyond. Overstock will buy the home goods retailer's brand name 
intellectual property and e-commerce platform. The deal is valued at nearly $22 million. Bed Bath & Beyond stores and inventory are not part of the deal. Former Audi boss Rupert Stadler becomes the first Volkswagen board member to be punished in the Dieselgate scandal. He has been handed a suspended sentence of one year and nine months. The Dieselgate scandal was a widespread scam involving Volkswagen vehicles. Many vehicles had an illegal software that could manipulate emission readings when being tested. India's antitrust watchdog is reviewing a case against French mirror manufacturing company Saint Gobain. A complaint was filed against the company's local unit by a retired glass industry executive. The company has been accused of forcing some partners to buy glass from it, from it exclusively. Failing to do would allegedly put the partners at the risk of being excluded from supplies altogether. As per reports, the Indian government is preparing a new multi-billion dollar subsidy scheme. This is for companies making electricity grid batteries. Under the scheme, the country will offer over $2 billion to encourage companies to set up manufacturing facilities in India. This is a part of its plan to transition to clean energy. Google has said that it will also cut jobs at its mapping app, Waze. Details regarding the number of impacted positions have not been made public. In 2013, Google acquired Waze for $1.3 billion. However, in December last year, the tech giant announced that it would merge Waze with the Google Maps team. Meanwhile, a Russian court has fined Google $47 million. This is over failing to pay an older fine. Earlier, the tech giant was charged for the alleged abuse of its dominant position in the video hosting market. This is Moscow's latest action to strengthen its campaign against foreign technology companies. Moving to sports, in cricket, India has confirmed to play a three-match T20 series against Ireland. India's tour to Ireland starts from the 18th of August and concludes on the 24th. The Indian national team will visit Ireland for the second time in a little over two years. The second men's Ashes test will be played today in Lords. England's veteran all-rounder Mohan Ali has been benched ahead of the match. He has been replaced by pacer Josh Tung. England will aim to level the series in the highly revered ground of Lords. Australia beat England by two wickets in the first test in Birmingham. The Independent Commission for Equity in Cricket, or the ICEC, has delivered a report in critique of English cricket. The report found evidence of racism, sexism and classism across all levels of cricket in England. The England and Wales Cricket Board acknowledged the need for change and apologised for any discrimination. ICEC gave a total of 44 recommendations to the English Cricket Board. In football, the race to win West Ham midfielder Declan Rice is again on a turn. Arsenal has improvised its offer to $135 million now. The bid has not yet been accepted by West Ham. This could set a record for a British player. West Ham holds on to the next move by Manchester City. City earlier bid around $127 million and West Ham is now expecting a new offer. England striker Harry Kane is set to join Bayern Munich for the initial offer of $76 million. Kane will make a move from Tottenham Hotspur to the German club. The 29-year-old is the all-time top goal scorer for both his club and his national team. Now, in the series of transfers, Tottenham Hotspur has signed Italian goalkeeper Guli Elmo Vicario. The deal was reported for a fee of $20 million. Vicario makes the exit from Italian club Empoli. Vicario has now become Tottenham's second signing of the transfer window. Nepal beat Pakistan 1-0 in the South Asian Football Federation Championship. Nepal's Ashish Chaudhary scored the winner late in the second half. The match was held at the Sri Kantirava Stadium in the Indian city of Bengaluru. Nepal finished their SAFF campaign with three points, while Pakistan is returning home without a point.
Manchester City has signed Croatian midfielder Matteo Kovacic for an initial 32 million dollars. His arrival follows the club announcing Ilkay Gundogan's free transfer to Barcelona. Kovacic made the move from Chelsea, which he had joined in 2018. Moving to Kabaddi, the Indian side has announced the full squad ahead of the Asian Kabaddi Championship. The tournament will be held next month in South Korea's Busan. Star Raiders Davin Kumar and Pawan Sarawat will lead the Indian team. The Indian Kabaddi team is the most successful side in the history of the Asian Kabaddi Championship. India has won 7 gold medals from the 8 editions played so far. In Formula 1, a reset ahead of Austrian GPC's Aston Martin lose and Ferrari gain. Formula 1's aerodynamic testing regulations or the ATR play a crucial role in the development rate of teams. The amount of wind tunnel time the teams get for the second half of the season is determined through ATR. Ferrari fared better than Aston Martin in the ATR test. Now on to the world of entertainment. Over 300 actors have signed a letter to the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. The actors have urged the leadership at the SAG AFTRA to take a hard line in the negotiations for a new contract. The contract will be made with the alliance of motion picture and television producers. Among the signatories are Mark Ruffalo, Jennifer Lawrence and Meryl Streep. They have said that they will go on a strike if need be. The Emmy Award statute is set to receive a 75th anniversary makeover. The number 75 will be etched onto the base of the trophy. The Television Academy said that it drew inspiration from Halley's comet that returns into view every 75 years. The 75th annual Emmy Award ceremony will be aired on the 18th of September. Animated series Futurama is set to return with season 11 after a decade. The 10 episode season will explore a new pandemic in town, future of vaccines, Bitcoin and cancel culture. The show will begin streaming on Hulu from the 24th of July. Two-time Oscar-winning editor Pietro Scalia will be honored at the Locarno Film Festival. He will be given the Vision Award that honors technical achievements and advancements in film. Scalia is known for films like JFK, Black Hawk Down and Good Will Hunting. He will receive the award on the 3rd of August during a ceremony at the festival's home ground in Switzerland. Bollywood actor Sonam Kapoor Ahuja will represent India at UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's reception to mark UK India Week. The event will take place at Sunak's official residence and office at 10 Downing Street in London. This runs from the 26th to the 30th of June. Television host Ryan Seacrest has been roped in as the new face of the game show Wheel of Fortune. The news comes shortly after long-time host Pat Sajak quit after serving for 41 seasons. Seacrest wrote that he looks forward to learning everything from Sajak during this transition. Comedian Jim Gaffigan is ready to launch his 10th comedy special on streaming platform Amazon Prime. Titled Dark Pale, the show will premiere on the 25th of July in over 240 countries. Meanwhile, Gaffigan will begin touring extensively with his shows. His Barely Alive tour will begin in Las Vegas on the 25th of August. He also has a five-city arena tour with fellow comedian Jerry Seinfeld in fall. Singer Taylor Swift has made a last-minute change to the Los Angeles leg of her era's tour. She has added a sixth date to the originally planned five-day tour. The new show will take place on the 7th of August. This is just two nights before her North American tour comes to an end. Swift also announced eight additional shows for the European part of her tour in 2024. Singer Pink had to pause a performance during her Summer Carnival 2023 at London's Hyde Park. A concert goer threw a bag of their deceased mother's ashes at her while she was singing her hit song Just Like a Pill. Pink picked the bag and asked, "Is this your mom?" To this, the person answered in the affirmative. And finally, British actor Julian Sands has been confirmed dead after being reported missing near Mount Baldy in California. 
the 65 year old was reported missing on the 13th of january while on a hike in the snow covered baldibol area the manner of death is still under investigation